everybody, Michael Batiste from the Elk Calling Academy. We're back in Utah, and this time we're at the International Sportsman's Expo, and we've made our way over to Backcountry E-Bikes, and we're hanging out with Dave. Dave, thanks for letting us come in. Thank you. You bet, man. Appreciate you doing this. Okay, so E-Bikes, they're becoming more and more popular in the industry. So tell us a little bit about Backcountry E-Bikes, where it came from. And sure, sure, yeah. Me and uh, my co-founder Brian, we started it, um, we're avid hunters. We started about three years ago in the R&D. We rode a lot of e-bikes, we did a lot of hunting on mountain bikes. Um, we fell in love with the electric part of the bike. And so we started finding out what the best bike out there is. So we were completely satisfied with what everything was out there. So we kind of started building our own bike and our own design. And uh, that's where we're here, we kind of came to that point. So now you said, you, you, you know, there's other options out there on the market. What separates backcountry e-bikes from everybody else out there? Sure, sure. So the biggest difference with us is we run the new Bafang Ultra Motor. Uh, the new Ultra Motor is by far the greatest technology that Bafang engineers have built to date. Um, and Bafang is the leader in e-bike industry I, I, you know, with conversion kits. They've been a leader with conversion kits. Um, a lot of bikes run either the G320 or the BBS HD motors. Uh, they're good, great motors. Um, the one thing that they kind of lack is a torque sensor. You know? Ours comes with a very intelligent motor that has torque sensor, cadence sensor, speed sensors. And they're going to make the bike feel and ride a lot more natural to you with obviously a lot more added power. So now I was talking to Brian earlier and it kind of sounds like that torque sensor, it, it kind of matches the amount of output you're putting into the bike and kind of Time gives design. just what you're so so if you're really hammering down it's going to get more assist if you're light so correct yeah so it kind of sounds like battery life an advantage to extend the battery life kind of get back there a little it's more it's very conservative with the battery it's intelligent i mean if you're cranking on it obviously it's going to use a lot of that battery because right. you're calling for it um, there's five levels of assistance plus a throttle, a thumb throttle if you need the thumb throttle. Um, so if you're on stage five and there's an eco mode and then there's a sport mode, so then the engine knows, well, he's in sport mode, we're gonna be a lot more generous with the power. Um, and you're climbing a hill and really getting after it on sport mode stage five, it's going to be adding a lot more power to that to that foot torque, so it knows how hard you're pushing on the pedal as fast and and fast. Now you you touched on the throttle, and this is one thing that I love as a feature that you guys offer. Yeah. So kind of kind of explain a little bit about what that throttle does and the advantage. Of it. So for us, when we hunt and we get into some technical areas, you know, we we like to use the pedal to obviously conserve battery, but the throttle is nice, so when you get in a technical spot and you, you want to just, you got your pack on, you can use that throttle to kind of get through some trails, or get around, um, or at the end of the day, when you know you have plenty of power, battery left in your bike, and you want to get back to camp, and don't want to work hard, you can use that throttle and, and move on back. Um, or if it's hot that day, and you don't want to work a sweat up by pedaling, I mean, with the electric assist, you're not gonna, you know, but the throttle makes it really nice. Now the the big debate out there with the e-bikes gaining popularity, non-motorized roads and non-motorized trails. But as long as people stay 750 or below, they can still go on those non-motorized. Correct. There's a lot of Utah land. We're based in Utah. That. Uh, it's set, you know, in the, in the riding at 750 watts and below, it's considered a non-motorized, which is a crowd equivalent to a one horsepower motor. Okay. So, um, that's kind of where it falls. States, a lot of states have different regulations, and we always recommend that they kind of check where they're going. Um, first by foremost is always be considerate to the other hunters that are on the trails, bike trails, that you're maintaining your speed and your, you know, and being considerate. That's that's sure. going to be what's going to really make the rules even harder on all of us that we're, you know, abusing them. You know, other, other big question, battery life. How far can I go on a charge? Good question. So, the biggest thing, and that's one of the biggest costs with bikes, is the, the battery. So what you want to look for in a battery is the um, amp hours. So our, most of our bikes come with a 48 volt 
14.5 amp hour battery. So that 14.5 amp hours is your the strength of the battery. Um, and that's, you know, you go from a 10 to a 15 amp hour is, you know, you're getting one third more distance of that battery. Um, I know, I we've tested our bikes personally, rode them hard, easy. You got that on stage five on sport mode, riding it as hard as you can. We've got 20 miles on route. Oh, wow. So, and I'm sure terrain really terrain plays into it exactly. and how much assist you're getting from the bike itself. So, exactly. If you're pulling a trailer, if you've got gear on your back, if you're you know, climbing hills, you're going to use more battery. If you're flat roads riding in, you're going to get, you know, we've got up to 80, 90 miles on rides. Oh, so. um, and the option is, is you know, for people that want to ride it in the backcountry, they could either just carry a second battery with them, or you guys also have a solar panel. We do. Option is two. Yep. So, yep, we've designed a solar panel kit, which is a 200 watt panel. Um, and the, the controller is adjustable, but we have them set at 48 volts for our battery, so they, they will charge at a, um, the rate that the 48 volt needs. If the full sun and that bat and the solar panel out will charge the battery in about four to five hours. Oh wow! At a 200 watts. And now you you said adjustable output, so I could take that in the backcountry and I could use that to charge my bike, and I could tone it down to maybe charge my camera batteries or my cell phone or really Correct. that yeah. one panel. I have a lot of options yeah. with it, so I don't have to carry multiple different panels and yes. have all these panels around my backcountry camp. And exactly. so yeah, this panel could charge anything you need. It just you know, recommend studying the controller, making sure you're adjusting the voltage right because you don't want to go charge a 12 volt camera on having on 72 volt setting. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to do some damage. To you. So. Now, speaking of backcountry, you guys make two different models of trailers. We have three models. Trailers. Three? Okay. Yep. We have three models. We have the more of the single tire that mounts on both. This is kind of our hunting, hunting cargo trailer. Okay. Super versatile trailer. It's for single trails, um, things like that. It's got a suspension in the back. It swivels right behind the tire and it hooks right on the rear axle, so it's going to feel very comfortable to tow. Not on the, you know, anytime you hook a trailer to your seat post, you're going to get a little top heavy. It right. doesn't feel very natural to pull. Um, this is a very popular, very comfortable trailer. Well, there's a reason we don't have hitch receivers up on the cab of our trucks. Exactly. So that lower, that lower hitch point, absolutely something. Okay, if, if people want to get some more information, where can they find you guys at? Our website, um, it's just www.backcountryebikes.com and you know, it's, we got, it's loaded up, we've got everything in stock right now, you know, we, we've got a, a limited edition of the Kuyu Verta 2.0 camo on our bikes, um, which has been real popular, it's, you know, um, and you know, other colors, so it's been great. All right, there you guys go. I'll put a link down below that'll take you directly to their website. Also, be sure to go over to their social media pages and follow them. That way you're up to date on any new announcements they have. So as always, guys, thanks for tuning in. Stay tuned. We just got to the International Sports Ends Expo. We have a lot more coming to you, and especially tomorrow, we got the 2018 World Elk Calling Championship. So we'll see you guys on the next one.